Hello all, welcome to Photo Group. In this session, we will learn how we can edit yellow colored wall with high intensity of color in it from scratch to final set points. Let's start with it. First of all, we will open today's folder and then raw image folder. In this folder, we can see some images which are from the same property. This is the bedroom shot with three exposures of it. One is medium tone, other is dark, and the third one is light. In the light shot, due to the yellow bulb of ceiling light and a table lamp, it is producing too much of yellow in it. At the end, it is increasing the intensity of yellow in, in, the, in this image. We can see a bit of light bleed over here. It can it have slight alignment issues which need to be sorted up. We are not going to remove too much of yellow from the image. If we do so, then we will end up making this image a bit artificial. We cannot show branding of any of the object from this image, so we have to remove the labels which you can see on the mattress over here this need to be removed same with this image the pointers which I have showed for previous image need to done exactly for this image too the extra pointer is we have to maintain a good brightness to the secondary area over here and the living room area which is visible so it looks even we are not going to uh, make it too yellow over here and this one a bit less yellow so we have to maintain it a bit. Same with this one. Whenever we get these kind of shot in which we see half different and half different area. In this case we always have to maintain color and brightness so both sides looks even. We have to maintain cropping and framing in this image. For example the right hand side door doesn't make sense so we will completely remove it and if we will remove the door then the object which is used as a stopper need to be removed too we have to apply same things to this image in respect of the color and brightness the left door frame need to be cropped out to do a good framing over here rest uh, same thing need to be done which are which we have to do in the previous image so uh, we have seen all the raw images and discussed the issues why it happened and the corrective measures which need to be taken before starting with the editing let's look at our style guide folder in which I have already imported one image from our style guide library. The way this image has been edited we need to carry out same kind of editing to our today's images. The wall colors looks muted and the brightness is pretty calm. The alignment and cropping framing is done in a good way um, so we have our style guide folder and we have talked about what need to be done so same kind of editing need to be carried out um, so now we have seen our style guide folder and we have talked about what need to be done so it's time to start the process of uh, editing starting with step one importing images to Lightroom for this we have to open our today's folder and then draw image folder if, you're, if we have to edit all images then we have to press ctrl to select all images if you are going to select only one then select it and then track press alt tab to go to Lightroom and then drop over here 
click import you can see the image uh, has been imported over here into the film strip and step 2 stacking select any of the image right click on it go to stacking and auto stack by capture time so for so we have to put it to uh, by using the slider we have to put as two second over here and then click on stack you can see that uh, it have been collapsed and we can see number three over here because this image this shot have three bracketed shot so you know we can stack to a to a group a set of visually similar photo together making them easy to manage stacks are helpful for keeping multiple photos of the same subject or photo and they reduce clutter in the grid view and the film strip step 3 hdr merge to merge the stacked image we have to click on it right click on it go to photo merge and hdr this is going to open hdr merge preview panel in this panel we have to always check on auto align and auto setting because this is going to give auto alignment to the image and this will give auto adjustment to the image degos amount supposed to be always none for internals but for externals we have to use it like low medium high accordingly because in external uh, we see movement of persons cars so in that in that uh, case you know it will make some ghost effect over there so this is going to resolve that thing but for now we are using none for internals while making the HDR we always have to check for any deformities in this image if it doesn't have any problem then we are going to merge it So here we can see our HDR with .dng format. We have to go and click on develop module because in library we always import the image and in develop module we do adjustment into it. So here we can see that it has couple of issues in the image like over the left side we can see the alignment is not good even though we have to crop this one to the left to remove this uh, door frame as it doesn't make sense over here okay, we can see lots of blue onto the floor this need to be resolved we, we can see that chromatic aberration the purple line onto the window frame that too needs to be removed we have to get a little bit of detail of the window over here because this is looking washed out the right side have too much of yellowness is because of the yellow fall because of the yellow lamp shade you can see lots of yellowness into the living room that too need to be resolved so you know whenever we get this kind of image we have to balance overall uh, side as per the color and uh, brightness and uh, there there is like some grains we can see over here on the wall that too we are going to remove so we we can see a little bit of uh, debris over here this white thing that too need to be removed rest looks fine step 4 lens correction to do lens correction we have to scroll down and go to lens correction over here and then click on remove chromatic aberration this is going to remove the purple line not 100% but some but at least 50-60% uh, of it so we have to then you have to click on enable profile correction like you can see that the corners are lighting up because of the enable profile correction the enable profile correction uh, when we switch switch it on we see that it is picking up the camera the make and model profile automatically to adjust the uh, vignetting and distortion in this image but we can see the the lots of lo uh, uh, but if we see the corners uh, 
looks like washed out in terms of brightness so what we can do we can get back some vignetting with the help of the vignetting over here distortion we are not using it because the image looks good enough if we scroll down we see transform over here so this is used to do manual uh, alignment but for now we have to press first of all auto because that would be our first priority because sometime when we press auto the image got corrected it is like 60-70% when sometime the image gets corrected so let's see so I think it is looking good but over the right hand right corner you can see that it is stretching uh, out a lot so what we can do we can go upward and use distortion a little bit to resolve the distortion issue and here it looks good now slight rotate would be needed yeah looks fine looks better so this is what we want You know, to, to see the preview, you can use the backslash to use before after. If you want the preview and the after window, uh, in the half of window, you can press Y to see before and after images on the same window. Step 5, tonal adjustment. To do the tonal adjustment on this image, we are going to scroll up and go to basic panel over here this one so here we can see the adjustment we are all we also see that it is automatically done it is because at the time of making HDR we have clicked on auto tone and that have adjusted the things like I said before so our first priority would be making vibrant zero and then saturation zero because uh, while making the HDR it, it always adds up uh, vibrance to this image we can see that in this image it is still looking too much vibrant and this is if we increase this one this is going to add up more vibrance to it so for now we are just making it zero let's go to upwards over here on the left side we can see that it is highlighting a lot as I said so we are going to reduce the brightness of it use highlight let's reduce this shadows increase a bit of blacks to remove the blacks from this image and let's decrease the exposure to get some details slight shadows and blacks again a bit of contrast ok let's press the Y to see before after ok looks good so you know while doing uh, these adjustments we also apply brush and masking in order to balance overall lighting so what we can do we can use this brush the adjustment brush and click on brush then reduce a bit of exposure from here and then use the these settings on the left side Here. to end the tool we always have to press done okay looks good as you can see over here that we have got the details which we haven't got into our HTR so it looks good now step 6 white and color balancing so to do color balancing in this image and white balancing we have to click on white balance selector tool from here and press on the a white area like this is the ceiling is white this is white we can use you know you can see the live result over here that what the white balance we are getting when we click on certain areas so we always have to use this tool only in the medium tone we don't have to use it in the lighter one nor in the darker one it will give some different effect to this image so it's better use the medium tool like 
here we can see this is medium click on it press y but you know why uh, after using this uh, auto white balance selector tool this have given this result that we see lots of blues now onto the floor and onto the window view also so what we can do we can use manual correction to it from here we can do so it is 3150 let's increase the temperature 32 let's increase more 3350 okay looks good we can take the same adjacent brush from uh, over here add brush and then add temperature to it slight tint the tint is going to add some green and temperature is going to add some warmth to the blues so blues can be suppressed so here you can see that it is being suppressed now let's add slight more tint and then saturation a little less okay looks good uh, done to end up the tool again take the brush add brush and then temperature we are going to slightly apply it over here done over here still we see lots of yellow vibrant color so this need to be resolved so what we can do we can click on the adjustment brush add and this time we are going to add linear gradient and to use this one we have to click on one area and then drag towards the left see you can see the effect in the masking like how it is going on it have a strong effect to the right side and it it goes it goes and it goes and it will ease up on the left like see how less effect it is showing on the left area from hard to soft let's push this one a bit forward and now let's apply the settings so um, for now I'm decreasing temperature slightly adding tint because we see lots of greens to it before so add a little bit of tint let's move it slight more and then so you can see that after taking I've got a little bit of uh, magentas over here and too much of cyan onto the floor uh, but this have given me a good effect onto the right area as you can see so what we can do we can to resolve all this thing we can take the brush and slightly decrease the tint and then add up onto the ceiling wall to reduce the magenta effect here you can see that how it is reducing done again take the brush add this time with temperature we are going to add this to the floor slight tint and highlight down done here let's see the before after window here you can see we have got a good effect over here the color looks sorted up the high intensity of yellow is sorted in the wall you can see how calm this is looking now again press y to close that before after view so you can you can have seen that how i've adjusted the help of ad adjustment brush the color so step 7 is final touch up of color and tone so we have to see the final uh, like still we see 
a bit of uh, uh, the, the color distortion over here so what we can do we can go down into the lens correction go to manual and remove the purple with the help of D fringe here if I zoom in you can see the effect but don't do 100% this is going to desaturate the area so it's better you do it half away like this go upward and Uh, we see slight blue over the windows so what we can do we can take the brush increase the temperature and then add it over here let's decrease highlight to get the view Press done to under tool. Step eight: maintaining consistency. To maintain the consistency, I've already done some of the images. Let's go back to the folder. Here, you can see that I have added uh, the images, which I have explained in the very beginning of this video. That you can see the color how I have uh, done in this image. Here, yeah, let's see. Let's take this image as a to maintain as an example to maintain the consistency. So here. So after looking, I I think that uh, the image looking perfect in terms of color, but uh, we have to slightly more reduce the yellowness from this area, and uh, we have to lit up this image. So to make it look perfect otherwise it is looking good so uh, uh, we are going to fix now the, the brightness onto this side we are going to fix the blacks from this wood the wooden frame and we are going to add up some more brightness to this area as, as it is looking pretty dark uh, we, uh, we have to still make the colors look a bit muted and yeah, that uh, all need to be done and and this one more thing which we have to do like we have to remove the graining in this area and we have to remove it of blues from this chair with the with the frame of it and the debris need to be removed the white thing so all this need to be done so that all need to be done in Photoshop. So let's uh, do the step nine, which is exporting the image with the right setting. To export the image, we have to click on the HDR image, right click on it, go to export, and then again export. You always have to see that the quality is supposed to be 100 and the resolution is supposed to be 300, and then export it. export back to the folder so here is our exporter image step 10 importing in Photoshop to import it we have to again drag it press alt tab to go to Photoshop and drop it so like I said that we have to add up a bit of brightness to this area uh, the blacks of the wood is pretty high that need to be resolved the graining need to be removed from this this part like it is in every wall we can see the graining that need to be removed the blueness from this chair need to be removed the brightness need to balance over here uh, this area looks a bit soft so we are going to add sharpness to it So all these things need to be done. Step 11, 
adjustment like brightness control um, light treat adjustment white balance color balance noise reduction sharpness so all need to be done in this step let's do the brightness first to get the brightness done we can use the adjustment layer from here brightness contrast increase the brightness close it always understand that white thing is to re to reveal and black is to hide so we cannot leave it as it is I'm pressing control I to invert it so you can see black if I switch it on and off this is going to have no effect to this image because black is used to hide the things so now we have to take the brush from here with foreground color as white opacity always supposed to be 12 flow supposed to be 100 smooth thing 0 why we have put opacity 12 because we if we are going to increase it we may have to deal with patch at the later end so it's better use it 12 to increase and decrease size of the brush you can use the uh, bracket curly bracket on and off so here you can see that how it have uh, given me a patch of because the opacity was 99 so like I said we have to make it for 12 now see what the effect is so that's the reason here I'm adding some brightness So you can see that uh, we have applied a good brightness to this image. Let's see the light bleed. Uh, okay, there's no light bleed in this image. Looks good. Now we'll move on to the white balance. So before going to the white balance, we have to merge the both layer. So to merge the layer, we have to click Ctrl E, or we can press right click on the above layer and merge down. To take the white balance, we have to make the duplicate of the background layer and then press Ctrl M to open curves. Again, we have to take the casting from the white area and that's supposed to be taken from the mid-tone, like I said in the Lightroom. To take the casting, we have to press Ctrl Shift and click on the area and then go to red 217, green 206, blue 197. So, Red is the highest value, we are going to copy this one and paste it on the both values. If I switch on and off, you can see that how and what result we are getting in the image. So again, we are not going to make, uh, use it overall. We are going to add the layer mask. Control I to invert. Take the brush with the opacity and brush on to certain areas where we think the color need to be good again merge it you can use Ctrl E to merge the layers. Now color balance. For color balance, you can see that the chair have a bit of blue on it. So what we can do, we can take the copy of the layer, go to filter, 
camera filter zoom in a bit slightly increase a bit of temperature reduce vibrance get back blacks and shadows slight more vibrance down and press ok create mask control light to invert take the brush with foreground white and then brush on the chair here excess blueness is gone again brightly on it on the above layer and merge down Uh, let's do noise reduction. To get the noise reduction done, we have to take a duplicate of background layer. Go to filter, camera filter, and scroll down to the detail section into the noise reduction. Increase it. Zoom in to the wall where there is too much of noise. And press OK. Take the masking. Control I to invert. Take the brush. Now you can take you know 30 40 of brush if you want because this is not the brightness we are applying, we are just removing the noise. And there is no patch thing behind, it will increase up our workflow. So I'm using 40% and applying it only on the plane areas, and plane area is only the wall and maybe some objects it doesn't have any texture to it again right click on the upper layer and merge down to add the sharpness, we have to again take the copy of the layer, go to filter, sharpen, and sharp mask. Amount supposed to be, amount supposed to be 170, radius 1, threshold 0, press OK. Zoom into the image, switch on and off to see the effect. So it is quite perfect for me. Like you can see that, yeah, looks good. I'm going to, you can leave it overall or you can create the mask, invert it and apply it onto the areas where you think that uh, it is needed. So this is how you can do. Right click on it, merge down. Step 12 item removal. To remove the items, we have to go to the stamp tool or uh, for the small things you can use spot spot healing brush tool and click on it, it will automatically removed remove the debris. It is a clean and an easy way to remove and actually it is fast too. Looks good now. Step 13 is self QA. To do the self QA section, we have to uh, go to our editor image and we have to see that how it is looking. Okay, the wood is looking like this, and into R1, we see like it is little black, so we are going to deal with it. And the second thing is, uh, we see a lot of green onto the carpet and this one looks pretty yellow that need to be need to be matched like this. Okay, so for this create a new layer, 
or uh, no sorry uh, for this create the background copy for a filter camera filter and from here I'm going to go to basic panel reduce a bit of vibrance uh, a bit of tint need to be added and slight temperature if needed press okay create the mask control I to invert take the brush with 12 opacity and now we're going to brush on the wall to match it with our hated image control it too much again take the copy of it you can press control J go to filter camera filter this time we are going to manage the carpet again vibrance down slight temperature slight tint to reduce excess greens from the carpet light temperature ok looks good press ok add layer mask control I to invert take the brush by clicking on B or you can select from it from the toolbar and now brush on the carpet Control E to merge or right click on it and merge down. Now you can see that it is pretty much matching, but still the wood need to be corrected. Let's just black from it. To correct this one, again take the copy of the background layer. For a filter, camera filter, and this time we are going to reduce to increase the blacks and shadows with slight tint on it slight highlight okay take mask control I to invert take the brush with 12 opacity and brush on the wood Now if I switch on and off you can see that uh, we are having a good effect over here. To merge it, press Ctrl E or right click merge down. So self QA is now done. Now we have to check the alignment. To check the alignment we have to take the copy of the layer. Press Ctrl T to activate transform tool and then Press Ctrl Invert Comma to get the and now here we can see that the vertical is still not corrected over here and this one so right click on it skew skew to left slight and skew to right so here we can see the slight correction and to hit enter to complete the thing now you can see if I on and off, you can see that vertical has been corrected now. Control E or right click on it to merge it. Step 14 resize. To resize this image, we have to go to image and image size, and from here we have to click on constraint crop on and write 2500 by 167. Sometime one pixel goes up or down, so in that case, you can switch it off and do it manually and press ok after that now control s and save so this is how we edit an image this is a client ready image
and this is what we send to our client. I hope this video have uh, given enough information to edit these kind of flats. Uh, and yeah, thank you. Have a nice day.